We all better hope Tadej Pogacar turns up to the Tour de France present and correct because Jonas is looking scary right now. He was leading GC by 110 before this stage even started, the first proper mountain stage with the Col de la Madeleine, the Col uh, Moyard, and then finishing with the Col de la Croix de Fer, which is a climb really in two parts. The first 6, 7 k is a false flat to 4% uphill, and then the last 6 kilometers are quite steep, 8% to over 2,000 metres. So the altitude does play a part in this region. Campanart's gotten the break once again and dropped his companions in the Aero position. Uh, Perry Charming and Byrall dropped. Bernal's getting bottles, but I think they were going for him on GC. They paced the Madeleine, which made no sense, but and then didn't do anything. But anyway, Jumbo Visma took control with Van Hooydonk in the valley before the second last climb, a long, steady climb. First 12K is like 6 7%. Just setting an, an unpleasant, heavy tempo, putting about a minute and a half, two minutes into Campanarts before it flattened out a little bit where Van Bala took over. But Lenny Martinez, he was looking really good. Uh, French GC prospect or climbing prospect. He's had a really good Neo Pro year so far. Van Hoydonk done. Van Bala taking over. And Campanarts made it to the top. That was kind of his finish line. He was happy to be there. 25, 20 seconds ahead of the GC group sprinting over before the d- descent, which was... It was hotly contested between Alphalib, Van Sevenot, Van Baal and Vingegaard, but then Jumbo took the front. There was a couple of dicey switchbacks and corners where Campanarts double-checked into this left-hander over the bridge, made it over. But here's the crud affair. And you can see on this profile what I mean. First half of it, in terms of distance, not time, is going to be over 30 kilometers an hour, the, the speed these guys go, and then it kicks up. But Campanarts, was kind of funny, got caught by Jumbo Visma. He's like... Phew. What are you guys doing? What's this all about? Um, kind of funny. Maybe he's like, why did you have to chase me down? I'm not a GC threat. Maybe he's like, why? You, you guys are absolutely stomping. The cows are also kind of shooketh. Uh, and you can see, this is big ring. 35, 34 kph for Van Bala and Vingegaard. But he's got it strung out, keeping it hard. Before Benoit moves up, got like two Ks until we go through the little village. And it really levels up, and Benoit moves up, which means it's about to be go time. We've got Jonas Deeper in the group. Alaphilippe was marking him a lot, actually, for this last sort of hour. Uh, Jates is there in front of Trentin and Groschartner. Mars there for Movistar. And yeah, Jumbo was pretty obvious what they're going to do, <laughs> which was Van Bala going to take them to the village. And you can see visibly with the uh, cars in the background how much it kicks up. Tej Benoit is going to do a hard lead out, except... He's got Volta on his wheel. He's going to take over after him. Groshana and Yates there. Where's Jonas? He's not on their wheel. Uh, he's deeper in the group. He was on the shallower section. And so Benoit's absolutely slapping it. The camera changes away. Guru and, v- and Landa are already dropped at this point. And we only see this from the Corvos photos that Micah clearly let Volta's wheel go during that Benoit lead out because Vingegaard wasn't on their wheel. So he's like, well, I'm not going to spike my watts to chase you guys and you can see here he's let Volta go Benoit's parkeggioing and Vingegaard's in their wheel behind O'Connor or Hindley and so Volta's kind of in this tricky not tricky but just the idea would be for Vingegaard to be on his wheel when he's absolutely smashing it Um, and then he looks around and sees that's not the case because Mike is like I don't need to follow you and spike my watch so Vingegaard kind of in the saddle attacks across you see the reaction from O'Connor getting back to Yates wheel that he didn't exactly just cruise across. Volta sees he's there and just starts stomping again. And here's the hard lead out. Haig lets the wheel go, not wanting to go over his limit with still 17, 15 minutes left on the climb. And here we have what's interesting. O'Connor also calms down a little bit. Poole tries to slide onto Yates' wheel. Micah knows he's about to blow up, does the experienced domestique thing, flicks Yates and overlaps Vingegaard's wheel to, so as not to leave a gap. He kind of sprints Yates onto Vingegaard's wheel. Just a savvy veteran move before he's fully finished, not wanting to leave Yates on a gap to Vingegaard. But yeah, super impressive from Volta. Seeing his development and progression this year has been you know outstanding, the Hungarian champion before. The predictable happens. Vingegaard steps off. Yates looks back. He's the best of the rest. He's in career shape, Adam Yates, but Vingegaard is just, you know, attacking over seven watts per kilo at, you know, probably 1,800 meters altitude, 1,700 meters altitude, and um, continues on with it. Interestingly enough, Bernal and Alaphilippe were kind of on a gap initially, like quite a big one, and Mars is ahead of them, but they finish like a minute 30 ahead of Mars. So I don't know if he gave up or whether he blew up or whether they just paced it way better or whether they started the climb in bad position because, you know, 
Volta and Benoit leading Vingegaard out like that. If you weren't in good position, you're going to struggle. But yeah, Yates holds it st- steady at 15 seconds for a little bit. O'Connor, I'm going to focus on the podium battle now. Sorry, Jonas, but it was a bit more interesting. Hindley looking very, very good. Uh, he was probably a bit stronger than it. Well, he was a bit stronger than everybody else. And this is the battle. Hindley O'Connor are all ahead of Haig on GC. Poole is their third wheel. There's a little bit of a gap to Guillaume Martin, who's closing that down. Haig is probably just going to try to defend like Martinez, Martin, and uh, Poole, who's out of the top 10 at this moment. And, he, and O'Connor and Hindley, they're trying to chase Yates because he's behind, well, we, for O'Connor, he's behind O'Connor on GC. So the podium battle in the top five battle was quite interesting, actually. I enjoyed it. Martinez in that group, he was with maybe trying to move up on, on Haig to get a T5. Mar- uh, oh, sorry, that was Danny, I meant. Lenny was also <laughs> also there doing a good job coming back. And Torsten Tryon, too, very nice from Uno X. And here you see Hindley... Last swig of the bid on, jettisons it, and then he attacks through this hairpin, through the steep section. O'Connor can't respond. They cut back to uh, Vingegaard, and then we see Hindley's gone clear with Shav- uh, Shavito, I think, chasing him. And Hindley gains a fair bit of time on Yates. That O'Connor group time is wrong. He gets really close. Carapaz fully dropped. But yeah, Hindley in good shape. O'Connor chasing now, and now because Martinez, Danny that is, is on O'Connor's wheel, Haig has to respond because he's threatening his T5. And this finish actually very good for Hindley, like 20 minutes, steep watt per kilo test after a reasonably hard stage, uh, kind of similar to Fadai, just lower altitude and less steep. But yeah, he was very, very good. Vingegaard gets into the last K. The only question is, what would the gap be? We knew when he already went that the stage win was secured from Adam Yates, who, you know, he's in really good shape. He just won to a Romdi, torching everyone on a long mountain top finish. O'Connor can't get back to Hindley's wheel, though, and Hindley almost comes back on Yates a little bit, getting to within 15 seconds of him, and Bernal actually comes back to this group before being dropped in the last 500-meter surge. So maybe Bernal's in good shape, just missing a little bit of polishing, but Jonas, absolutely terrifying shape ahead of the Tour de France, winning this, what was an 18-minute climb with ease, arguably his best climb, pure climbing performance ever of, of his career. When you consider the altitude, check out the article linked down below. Winning the stage ahead of Yates on 41 seconds. Hindley, very, very good. 53 seconds of Giro winner of last year. O'Connor on 104, and then the other group of the top five guys on 110. In terms of the revised GC, Jala loses a few spots, but fought on admirably. Vingegaard extends his lead to over two minutes. And now Hindley, O'Connor, Yates, I think are going to have a bit of a battle tomorrow for the podium. But here's what Vingegaard had to say after the stage. Yeah, I uh, I felt good today and I uh, I wanted to go for the stage as well. And uh, the boys really worked hard for me all day today and uh, we had the plan to, to go for it. And uh, I'm really happy to, to take the win and to, to pay it off in the end. Uh, so yeah, I want to, to say thanks to all my, uh, my teammates. Last stage of the Dauphiné tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed the video. Will Vingegaard win another for Jumbo Visma winning, what, five stages this week? Who knows? But I'll be with the recap tomorrow. Ciao.